think I read um, in your blog that um, you maintain, I I'm sorry if I misunderstood, you maintain the word uh, solution focused brief therapy to honor it, uh, Hinsu Kimberg and uh, Sid Shazer. Of course, and um, of course, because there are a lot of point of connection. But um, if I if I remember well, you say something like um, it's not anymore solution focused because if you talk about solution, there is a problem that you have talked about before, and in fact, it's it's very interesting because when people um, here in Italy, um, approach to solution focus brief therapy. They um, people, I mean, uh, psychologists, therapists. They often think that it's um, how to say uh, an approach that develops the solution to the problem or that help the client to describe the solution. And it's not that. It's, it's more not. to uh, I, how can we say it uh, to. Um, I don't know, a preferred feature-oriented uh, brief therapy. Look, look, Flavio, I agree with that. I mean, I think that if you wanted to do if, if you were setting up a new model now, uh, and, it, you know, people did what we do, then a better name would be something like outcome-oriented therapy. Mm -hmm. Outcome-oriented, probably. But I do think that... If you look at Steve DeShazer's writings, everything that we've done can be found in his writings. Mm. Much less, much less in what he actually did. Because one of the interesting things about DeShazer was what he wrote about and what he did were not the same. And so Chris Harvey and I began to get very, very interested in what he wrote about and began to think to ourselves, if you took what he wrote about seriously, what sort of model would you end up with? And I think what you'd end up with is, look, something similar to what we do now. And you're right. I mean, the, the, the word solution doesn't work for us mm -hmm. because you can't have a solution without a problem. So immediately... You use the word solution, you are bringing the other side of that distinction into your thinking. If you've got a solution, you have to have a problem. And we're working quite hard at some level to invite people to focus on an outcome and not to have to bring the problem in their thinking into the conversation. Now, look, it may still be there in the shadows somewhere. Yeah. in the background of the work we do. I think it probably is. But in terms of the work, we're not inviting people to bring it in. Although the name is not a good name. The mm -hmm. name is not a good name. But on the other hand, I do. I feel a huge debt of gratitude to the work of Steve DeShazer and Sue Kim Burke. Um, Steve was very much our mentor at Brief. We saw him every year, at least once every year, between 1990 and the year that he died. And um, I can see a tradition. I can mm -hmm. see a tradition. And I think I still operate within that tradition. Yeah. Whether people will continue making that decision into the future and still call it solution focus brief therapy, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see. I think that um, I literally love uh, solution focus. I, I love your approach. I have to confess that um, uh, I feel lucky to um, have been trained in brief approach to solution focus. It, I, it, it completely fit with my uh, love with minimalism, with to do just with to start with uh, the idea to do the how much less is possible, and then you can always increase. Uh, and look, Flavio, even there, I think we're honouring Steve Tshazza. Yeah. You know, what he was interested in was both minimalism and simplicity. Yeah. What is the least that you need to do 
that's associated nonetheless with a good outcome. And anything additional that you do from that point of view is actually not justifiable. Why would you do things yeah. that aren't necessary? And so our experience of solution focus has actually been an experience of cutting things out. Yeah. You know, in the very early days, uh, Chris Harvey and I, we worked, we worked in a terribly interesting, a very innovative, very creative mental health clinic in London. It was systemic, systemically oriented. And um, look, it was also very, very problem focused. And we were trying to use these new ideas from solution focus. And so every time I met a client, a new client, it was almost like I had to make a gear change. Mm. You know, I came out of this very problem focused clinic and now I was trying to step into a solution focused conversation a very different way of thinking, a very different way of approaching people. And in order to help me to make that shift, what we began to introduce into Solution Focus was something we called problem-free talk. So we would connect with people in a context of possibility of strength of competence, yeah. rather than connecting with them in their problem. So rather than starting with what brings you here, we would start with, so how do you like to spend your time? And as I talked with people, you know, I'd be interested in their strengths, their skills, their competencies, their talents, their abilities, all of that, and inviting people to focus on that. Yeah. And then I would go into the work. And what we realized was, after we'd been doing that for a while, and you know, this became so embedded as our way of thinking that I didn't need to do it anymore. This is just the way I thought. That actually we realized we were doing it for ourselves rather than doing it for the client. Hmm. And the client didn't need us to do that. We could just walk into the room and ask them, so what are your best hopes from our talking together? And we could start work. Because in solution focus, you can't start work until you know, until you have a starting point for the conversation. That's a better way of putting it. And the best hopes gives you a starting point for the conversation. So in that sense, we've been interested in minimalizing and making simpler. Mm -hmm. And just as we've changed the beginning of a session, you know, we've also changed the endings. You know, taking a break, having a team discussion, compliments, bridging statement, tasks or homework, we've begun to realize that none of that is necessary. And if it's not necessary, the question is, do you have any justification for doing something that doesn't actually make a difference to the client? Yeah. How is working solution focus in the world, I would say? or in England, in UK, in the university. I, I mean, here, you know, in Italy, uh, today is barely unknown. Um, we must be grateful to the guys in Florence. Uh, me and my team, we're doing a lot of work to spread it around. And there are a few other people who are talking about uh, solution focus. But, uh, in the university and uh, psychology faculties or other faculties is unknown. Nobody's talked about that. And this is a problem because solution focus as um, an epistemology, um, um, a philosophy that is connected to postmodernism, to poststructuralism, which is something that, uh, at least here in Italy, is not so um sp spread that it's not so so tough so um, yeah. so much how is yeah, your yeah. country well um i think I, i i think we're in transition oh yeah in some ways um and i think that the spread of the approach is both a good thing and it has difficulties attached to it 
Um, what we're seeing, I think, is that the approach is growing predominantly in the world of public health services, public yeah. services, yeah. welfare, social care, public health, mental health. And um, is spreading much less in the world of private psychotherapy. Why? I think that the model is to some extent inconvenient okay. for private therapists. To the extent that, look, you, you know, we, we say to people when they come, we'll see you for as, you know, as long as it takes, you'll tell us when you're ready to end. And typically we see people three, either three, four or five times. I mean, currently I'm working on the basis of potentially repeatable single consultations. Mm -hmm. So I make an appointment with someone, I see them and I say, look, if you want another consultation, just email me and we can make another time. So I'm working on that basis currently. Now, that's fine for me. But if your income depends on private psychotherapy, then it's incredibly frightening to move into a world where you see people three, four, five times. Hmm. It's much more secure to you know, have clients who come much more often than that, because then your income is much more secure. Yeah. And so I think it's actually quite frightening in that way. Now, the extent to which private psychotherapy is being led into solution focus uh, is when people are taking on part-time jobs and contracts. So people who've got their own private practice, but who may be working a doctor's surgery. And in the doctor's surgery, maybe they spend two sessions there, you know, two, two mornings a week. And in the surgery, they're only allowed six sessions. And suddenly they begin to think, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to do something else because I need a model that's going to work in six sessions. Or people who work in employee assistance programs, EAPs, mm -hmm. where firms buy into services to support their employees, where they're allowed, again, not very often six sessions. Or people who work in university departments, supporting students and supporting members of staff. And there again, very often it's a six session model. But look, Solution Focus has actually moved quite slowly into private psychotherapy. Now, where it has expanded quickly is in the world where there's too much demand and not enough supply. Social work, yeah. mental health, no psychiatry, yeah. um, child psychiatry, more than adult really. But in those worlds, and what we're now seeing are people who are training as psychiatric nurses, for example, people who are training as social workers, people who are training as psychologists to some extent, all being exposed to solution focus yeah. on their trainings. Very often they get a half day on solution focus, maybe one lecture. And what I've noticed is that the half day or the lecture is very often given by someone who's not actually a practicing solution-focused brief therapist. Nice. So the risk is, I would say, and I, look, I don't want to be rude, but the, the lectures are given by people who actually don't understand the approach. And the version of solution-focused that people are getting is in some sense is quite, a, I would say, quite a crude version. Yeah. Sometimes quite an old fashioned version of the approach. And, and so you have people coming and saying, you know, I've never liked solution focus because, and then they give you a heap of reasons, yeah. all things that I would never actually do. That I would never actually do in my it's also, so yeah. we're seeing an expansion, but the question is whether that expansion is good for our field or not.
And I'm not sure. I'm not sure. 